This video looks at determinants for 3 by 3 matrices. So we're going to extend the concept of what is a determinant, which was introduced in the previous video, but only for 2 by 2 matrices. Here we're going to extend the definition to look at 3 by 3 matrices. Now, viewers are reminded that a determinant is a definition. It's not something to understand, it's just something you have to learn. And you're also reminded that determinant is only defined for square matrices. So this is what we did in the previous video. We said if you have a 2 by 2 matrix, then the determinant is given by the product of the diagonals minus the product of the off diagonals. And you notice we introduce the notation of these vertical lines to represent determinant. What we need to do now is consider higher dimension matrices. Now, unfortunately, the definition is a bit more complicated for higher dimension matrices. And therefore, we require some other definitions first before we can move to the determinant. We're going to need to understand terms such as minors and cofactors. So you're going to have to learn what's a minor and what's a cofactor. So here's a determinant then for a 3 by 3 matrix. The first thing we've done is said we want this concept, concept of a matrix of cofactors. So you'll see I've got a matrix A and I've said the cofactors of A and I've used capitals to distinguish between the cofactors and the original elements of the matrix so you know which is which. So lowercase a for the original matrix, uppercase a for the cofactors. Now, by definition, this is really important that you understand, that by definition, the determinant can be given by one of these formula. And you'll notice what I've done here is I've expanded along a row. So I've said I'm going to take the first coefficient of the matrix A, multiply it by the first coefficient of the cofactor matrix, the second coefficient on this top row and the third are multiplied by the corresponding cofactor element. So you'll see I've gone along a row and I've taken coefficient times corresponding cofactor. I could have gone along the third row. So I could have gone A31, A32, A33, and taken the third rows of cofactors. So that's one way of doing it. That's not worked, but anyway. So an alternative from using the rows is to use the columns. So we'll demonstrate that here with these formula just rubbing out that so we can see what we're doing. So for example, I could take the second column. I could take A12, A22, A32, and multiply by the corresponding elements in the cofactor matrix. And you'll see that's this formula down here. So you can expand along any row or any column, multiplying the coefficients in the matrix times the corresponding coefficients of the cofactor and adding them all together. And this is the definition of determinant. Now I'm not going to prove that these formula all give the same result. You can take that on trust but if you really want to prove it you can multiply it all out later and you'll see that it works. So cofactors. We've obviously used the cofactor matrix here so we need the cofactors to find the determinant. However in order to get the definition of cofactors we now need another definition, which is what is a minor. So we're going to go now to minus. So a minor for 3 by 3 matrices. A minor, we're going to use the notation here, A, I, J, and then you'll see this superscript M, so you know I'm talking about a minor for the coefficient A, I, J. And what you do is you basically remove the relevant row and column. And this will be obvious after an example. So if I want the minor associated to A13, so that's A13, what I'm going to do is cross the column that A13 is in, cross the row that A13 is in, and see what I've got left. And that is the minor. You'll see this matrix here, A12, A21, A22, A31, A32, is exactly what I've defined to be the minor. Let's do a second example. What if I want the minor of A22? Well, I cross the row that A22 is in, I cross the column that A22 is in, and whatever is left, that matrix is the minor of A22. And you'll see here, it gives me A11, A13, 
A31 and A33. So a minor is simple as that. Cross out the corresponding row and column and the minor is whatever is left. So some problems. Find the minors for the positions 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1. So if I do 1, 2, so 1, cross out the first row, 2, cross out the second column, then I'm going to get A12 minor equals 8, 0, 0, 2. So next one, it says do the 2, 3 position. So I cross out the second row, cross out the third column, and I'm going to get A23 minor equals, and what have I got left? 3, 6, 0, 1. And the final example, the 3, 1 position. So I cross out the third row, cross out the first column, and what have I got left? A31 minor equals 6, 5, minus 1, 0. So minors. Minors are still matrices, and we define minors for each coefficient. Thus, a 3 by 3 matrix is going to have 9 minors. Each of one is a matrix in itself, and each one is a 2 by 2 matrix. What do we need next? We need to understand this chessboard of signs. So before defining cofactors, we need a concept of signs linked to a matrix position. And there's a very specific way of doing this. We start with a positive sign in the 1, 1 position. So that's the first most important thing. You put a positive in the 1, 1 position. And then we notice that neighboring terms must have opposite signs. So it becomes straightforward. So you can see the 1, 1 position has a positive, And from there, I've just made sure that all neighboring terms have opposite signs. So you see the signs toggle. We go plus, minus, plus, and so on in any direction. What you'll notice is the position ij is positive if i plus j is even, and it's negative if i plus j is odd. So now we can go and define the cofactors. So a cofactor, and you see here, is taken as the determinant of a minor with the additional thing that we take the sign from the sign matrix. So let's look at A13. We want the cofactor A13. So first of all, we've already done the minor. We did that before. So the minor A13M is A21, A22, A31, A32. And if we want the cofactor, We've got to take the corresponding sign position, which you see here for 1, 3 is plus, And therefore, the cofactor A13 is given by plus times the determinant of this minor. And so the determinant of that minor is given here. The product of the diagonals minus the product of the off diagonals. So that's the cofactor A13. We can do a separate example here. Let's look at the 2, 1 position. So you can see the minor for the 2, 1 position is given here. You can see it's A12, A13, A32, A33. If I want the cofactor for the 2, 1 position, I have to take the sign from that position, which here is a negative, and then the determinant of the minor. So you'll see I get minus, there's a minus sign, I get the determinant of the corresponding minor. So here I've got the minus there, and then the determinant, the product of the diagonals, minus the product of the off diagonals. And that's the def definition of the cofactor. So just a reminder then, what's the definition of a determinant for a 3 by 3 matrix? We needed the original matrix A, we needed the matrix of cofactors, and then we expanded along any row or column coefficient times corresponding cofactors. And what we'll do is we'll demonstrate this definition with a few examples. So find the determinant using the top row expansion. So I'm going to expand along this top row. So what I need is the cofactors A11, A12, A13. So A11 is going to be given by plus times the determinant. Now, if I cross off the first row and the first column, I get minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. So that's going to give me a determinant of minus 2. So A11 is minus 2. A12 is going to have a negative position from the sign matrix. So I get minus. 
into the determinant. Now I cross off the first row and the second column. I get 8, 0, 0, 2. So that's going to give me minus 16. And finally, A13 is going to get a positive from the sign matrix. I cross off the first row and the third column and I'll get 8 minus 1, 0, 1 and so that gives me a determinant of 8. So the final formula is going to be 3 times minus 2 plus 6 times minus 16 plus 5 times 8. So that's going to be the determinant of A equals, and you'll see all I've done is plug the numbers into this formula up here. So you can now solve that minus 6. Oh, and this is going to be a painful one, which I will get wrong. Um, minus 96 plus 40. Different example then. Find the determinant using the second column expansion. So I'm now going to expand down here. So you'll see I'll get a12 times a12, a22, a22, a32, a32. So first of all, let's find the cofactors. So a12. So the position for the 1, 2, the sign is a negative. And if I cross off the first row and the second column, I get minus 2, 2, 2, and 5. So that's going to give me minus 10, minus 4, which is minus 14, with another minus sign gives me plus 14. A22 two, two is going to have a positive from the sign matrix. And if I cross off the second row and the second column, I get 0, 4, 2, 5. And so that's going to give me minus 8. And finally, A32. So I'm going to knock off the third row and the second column. So I'm going to get 0, 4, minus 2, 2. And this is going to give me plus 8. So I substitute the values into the formula and we're going to get the determinant of A equals 3 times 14 plus minus 1 times minus 8 plus 1 times 8. So that's going to give you 42 plus 8 plus 8. Now, this is a bit more open-ended. Find the determinant using an expansion of your choice. So you can choose any row or any column for the expansion. And clearly, what's encouraging you to do is say, look, the first column has got two zeros in it. So if I expand along the first column and use A11, A11, plus A21, A21, plus A31, a31. What I notice is that A21 equals A31 equals 0, so the determinant just reduces to A11, A11. So the computation is much, much easier. I've done that. I've put that the wrong way around. I do apologize. It's A11 equals A21 equals 0, so the one we want is A31, A31. Easy mistake to happen. So, what I need is the cofactor A31. So A31 is going to be plus, because that position is associated with a plus in the sign matrix. And then you've got minus 2, 4, 8, and 2. So you're going to get 4 minus 32, which is minus 28. So if I now do my formula, the determinant of A is going to be 2 times minus 28, which is minus 56. So in summary, we've defined a determinant for a 3 by 3 matrix, and the definition required some further definitions. We needed to understand the concept of a minor, the concept of a sign matrix, and the concept of a cofactor, because you need all three in order to do the determinant. We've also demonstrated that selecting the row or column for the expansion judiciously can reduce computational effort. But nevertheless, in general, you'll begin to realize that calculating determinants 
for 3x3 three three matrices is somewhat tedious because it requires, in general, three 2x2 two two determinants.